Hello and welcome to today's Urban Conversation. Do you know how to diffuse a situation where violence is imminent? Well, we'll find out in today's episode. Ashwin Mohan is a martial arts expert who has trained thousands of men and women in a variety of martial art forms. He runs self-defense training programs across the country for women of all ages. In recent years, Ashwin has been studying and experimenting with mediation in situations where violence is imminent. Today he shares why we should mediate violence and demonstrates how to. Thanks to Vivanta by Taj and Shopper Stop for supporting this episode. Ashwin, you've been experimenting recently with mediating when violence is imminent. Tell me a bit about your experiences in that. We usually don't see a violent situation as a relationship. We see it as the end of a relationship. We want to end that and get out quickly. Now, uh, the problem with that is that it comes back. And uh, the person would, you know, if you've hurt someone really badly, he, he wants to get even and there's no end to violence. So, I, uh, I took a page out of mediation and I was seeing if I can apply it to violence uh, by accepting that violence is a relationship. And um, a, a particularly challenging part in this is the shortness of time. So you have to do your mediation very quickly and make sure that uh, you get a win-win even with your attacker. So you can't make your attacker into a thing. You have to now treat him as a person, which is the entire shift in consciousness in uh, from martial arts where you, you just uh, finish your enemy and go away to what we do which is uh, to to take a conflict and come out uh, win-win. I think I like what you're saying about the relationship aspect simply because then um, and what you're saying also about you know treating the other person recognizing that both your attacker uh, and you are equal human beings because then you think of context and in self-defense you can't run away from the repercussions of of the degree of defense that you exercise let's say you know, or the tactics that you exercise if it's going to have a negative impact, some sort of injury or anything, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, now, the relationship aspect is something that's a larger thought, involves um, recognizing a few different elements and the dynamics would be very different. So, what are you recommending here in terms, you know, when you say that, consider that this is a relationship, what are you recommending? You said the magic word, context. So you have to role play uh, with uh, every possible context that you think can occur in your life mm -hmm. and you have to practice your mediation skills and make sure that you can uh, be effective and this is what we do now even in our classes. Now Ashwin, you know when I, when I think of the average person out there, it, you know, let's take me for an, ex you know, for an example, if I put myself in a situation where I feel violence is imminent, mm -hmm. the first thing I feel is fear. No, um, uh, maybe maybe someone else will panic, and, and you know. So, how do you get over get over these emotions before you feel empathy? I mean, it, it takes a lot. Yeah, you have to take it step by step. The first one would be the first step would be to breathe, because that will relax your muscles. And uh, the second step would be to connect with yourself. Okay. So you you see you acknowledge your fear. You don't say. Uh, you don't ignore it or you don't try to say that it's not there. Then second, you, you connect with that person and uh, this can be practiced on a daily basis on every relationship that you're having with all human beings. So if you're practicing empathy, it will come naturally. Mm -hmm. And once that's there, then you speak from the heart. You don't, you don't intellectualize or try to manipulate him. Okay, so it's this not way. a strategy. It's not a pre-prepared strategy. Okay. The strategy is prepared by the brain once the situation is understood by the okay. heart. So it has to go from a, uh, it, uh, I say heart because it's uh, from these nerve plexus that it seems to be coming. Empathy. Empathy, not from here. Okay, so let's say a person is able to, a, a potential victim is able to feel uh, empathy towards a potential attacker. Yes. What then? How do you express it? How do you engage? How do you understand the context? How do you diffuse the situation? What are the next steps? So you ask him, are you needing this? Are you feeling this? Are you needing this? Whatever that may be. So let's say the attacker wants your money. Say, Give me your money. Say, hey, uh, I, 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 I would certainly give you my money. Here you go. And I give it to him. I, I don't want to save my money at this time. I want to save my life, right? So, and maybe I'm at knife point and he's saying, give me your money. 
and then I'm saying, hey, all right, here, here you go, have the money and relax. I have not seen your face. I, I know you're worried about whether I've seen your face. I haven't seen your face. I don't know who you are. Take the money and go. So now we've empathized with his idea of being caught because I got into his shoes. I know that I'll have to kill you if you see me because you'll go to the cops and complain and I'll have problem. So I'll, I'll have to at least, you know, I'll have to kill you. There's no other way. Others will go talk about me, right? Mm -hmm. So even a simple mugging can turn into a murder if there's no empathy. Okay. Uh, if the person says, hey, I know who you are, I'll get even with you. Here, take the money and I'll look after you the next time. He says, what next time? <laughs> and he'll cut your throat. What about in other situations? Okay, so, so, so uh, robbery is one thing. What about if it's a sexual offense? Okay. So we have a concept called um, FEND, which is a force uh, that's, um, that enables needs-based discussion or needs-based dialogue which means that when an attacker is coming at me, I don't go full on on him. I I want to make, um, use just enough force and just in the right way so that it opens up a space for a dialogue. Earlier, um, my training in martial arts makes me use force to neutralize the threat. Now, when we call him a threat itself or when we call him an enemy, these are the words we use in martial arts. All my teachers use these words, threat, enemy, attacker. These are objectifying the guy. This, he has good reason to attack you. And it, when we understand the context, it's very easy to solve this problem and show him alternative ways. Let's understand that violence happens because of scarcity of options. Mm -hmm. So a person can only attack you when he sees no other option. That's really the last option anyone wants, including those who, are, who we consider addicted to violence, etc. Mm -hmm. um, they see that as their only option to have their needs met. If you can give them some other option, they'd they would love to take it. Now, for this demonstration, I would like to enlist the help of Anumit and Harsh, uh, who are going to play attackers, who are going to uh, specifically carry me off to a secondary location. Uh, suppose I was a woman and try to commit a sexual assault. So, they're going to get into the role, right? So, let's begin. Yeah, go for it. Hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down, guys. Relax. Relax, please. Can we talk this over? Why are you attacking me? Did I do something to offend you? Are you all right? Did I do something to offend you? Yes? Will you talk to me, please? Yeah. Please, please. What is it? Did I, did I do something? Am I wrong? Not wrong. What, what is this? Why, why are you attacking me? What did I do? Very, very I would distressed. like to know. I don't like this dress. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it hurt you. Let, we can talk about it. All right. There's no need to hit me. You can talk to me. I'm a person. I have feelings. I have... I can understand you. I know what you're feeling. You're angry. I also get angry. Relax. Relax, please. I'm going to let you go now. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm going to let you go. Relax. So, I'd, I'd like to break this down. It looks... It looks very effortless, but there are a lot of steps in this, okay? So the first thing, when he hit me, mm. I rolled with the blow. So here is when, uh, could you please hit me in slow motion? Yeah. He hit me, I rolled with the blow, so I didn't get hurt. And naturally, you take a breath in. This calms you down. The moment he calms me down, he pulled my hair. Yeah. When he pulled my hair, and he also came in, right? I decided to hook his neck here, which is a leverage point, right? I hooked his neck. I don't need strength for this. I'm using my own natural body weight to tumble right on them. It's not difficult, really. You just fall. Anyone can fall. But you just aim your fall onto a pressure point. Now, once I'm down here, it gives me the space to negotiate. This guy is stuck, I know for sure. Yeah. He's stuck under my leg here. See? The arm was stuck under uh, Could you please move so the camera can see it? Here. His arm is stuck here, so he really can't move. This guy is down here. Yeah. Now, I needed to get him stuck. So, I put his arm here. Yeah. My legs are stronger than their arms. Women's lower bodies are strong, right? So my legs are stronger than his arms. I've used my legs to control. I'm holding a, a leverage point here so he can't move his head. And uh, I'm talking to him. This guy can't move. Can you move? No. Can you move? Hardly. So I, yeah. I can hold you like this. Now, it wasn't exactly how it happened, but it's pretty much the same principle. You hold leverage points. You can hold clothes, you can hold leverage points. Don't go back and hit them because this will escalate. Yeah. 
So I'm holding it here. I'm talking. I'm saying I'm going to release you. I really don't want trouble. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. And I'm going away. So those were the steps involved in the mediation. Now, of course, you need to practice to be physically fit. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty much doable by anybody. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and the discussion on mediating when violence is imminent. Don't just register in your head. Stay fit and try to practice this with friends. See you on the next episode. Join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Pinterest.